In this video, we'll prove that the limit as x approaches 5 of 1 over x is equal to 1 fifth using the precise definition of the limit. First, we'll look at what the precise definition of a limit is and how to go about using it to prove a limit equation is correct. The precise definition of the meaning of the statement, the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l, is for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And proving a limit using the epsilon delta definition of a limit takes the following general strategy. First, Suppose that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon for the values of f of x and l given and an arbitrarily small positive value of epsilon. Second, use algebraic manipulations to convert the inequality the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon into the absolute value of x minus c is less than some algebraic manipulation of epsilon. And third, if we can accomplish two, then we just set the delta to that algebraic manipulation of epsilon, and we know that whenever the absolute value of x minus c is less than that, the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, and the limit is proven. So let's start out assuming that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than some epsilon. In this problem, f of x is 1 over x, and l is 1 fifth. Now our goal is to transform this into the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than some algebraic manipulation of epsilon. We start out with our absolute value of 1 over x minus 1 fifth being less than some epsilon. We can then use basic algebra to combine the difference of fractions to a single fraction, 5 minus x over 5x. Then we can substitute a fraction of absolute values for an absolute value of a fraction. At the top now is what we have so far. Absolute values of differences are commutative, so we can change 5 minus x to x minus 5. And then we can rewrite the quotient, the absolute value of x minus 5, over the absolute value of 5x as the absolute value of x minus 5 times the absolute value of 1 over 5x. We have our absolute value of x minus c. Now we can start to do some reasoning to get rid of that absolute value of 1 over 5x. The problem we're working on is the limit as x approaches 5. So we can definitely say that the absolute value of x minus 5 will be less than, say, 1, which means that x minus 5 will be between minus 1 and 1. This means that x will be between 4 and 6. Now we're looking at what values of x, when substituted into the absolute value of 1 over 5x, will constitute an upper bound. So we can say what values of x ensure that the absolute value of 1 over 5x stays less than it. When it comes to denominators, increasing the value makes the expression smaller. So if the range of values is 4 to 6 to keep the absolute value of x minus 5 less than 1, let's focus on x being greater than 4 to keep the absolute value of 1 over 5x less than some value. So if x is greater than 4, then the absolute value of 1 over 5x is less than 1 20th. And now with our initial condition that the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 1, which as we said was reasonable since we are working on the limit as x approaches 5, we can say that the absolute value of x minus 5 times 1 20th is less than epsilon, since we just saw that given our condition, the absolute value of 1 over 5x 
is less than 1 20th. So if we let delta be the smaller of 20 times epsilon and 1, we can say that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if the absolute value of x minus 5 is greater than 0 and less than delta, then the absolute value of 1 over x minus 1 fifth is less than epsilon and the limit is proven.